This video is going to take you through responding to an invitation to tender or an ITT, taking you from the point of finding that ITT and your pending end ITTs, creating a response, submitting the ITT itself and the information within the qualification technical commercial envelopes, as well as clarifications, and then signing the contract once you have been awarded a project. Okay, so you've logged into your Provide2 account. First up, you're going to want to find your ITT to respond to. So they're always going to show here in the center within your pending responses. Title, end date, and time to close. You can also access them in your ITTs and the quick links. This will show you your full list of all the ITTs, both closed and awarded, to be evaluated and running. Any that are in running status you've yet to submit. So you can click in to create your response. Now in here, we've got our three envelopes which cover qualification. So they're the pass fail uh, qualification criteria for a project covering things like insurances. We've got the technical which are centered around the ability to deliver on the project and its deliverables. And we've got the commercial which as it sounds like is the commercial questions relating to the payment schedule and costings. Now these questions will be configured depending on the type, size and complexity of projects. So it will vary. Sometimes you might not even have all three envelopes. To see the specification, you're going to click in buyer attachments. Any documentation will be in here. And it's always going to be in my responses to then create the response. If you don't want to respond um, to a, an ITT and a project isn't suitable for you, you can decline. Click into the decline to respond. Select your reason, bit of information, and submit. To start your response, then you're going to click Create Response. That's going to open up the envelopes. It's going to ask you to choose between my organization and a consortium. As it says, usually it's going to be my organization only. So we're going to click, click, click Save there. And that's opened up the questions. So first thing we're going to want to do is Edit Response. And that gives the ability to edit. Now in the qualification questions, these are going to be pre-populated from your profile. So all of these questions will relate to the information you provided at accreditation. You can update them and if these are out of date or you haven't updated for a long time, it's best to check. So things like industry standards and insurances will be in here. Value of insurances, end dates, and also the GDPR schedule. You can download that within here, view, and then click and attach. To click an attachment, we just do it in here. Um, and we can download and attach us. So, uh, authorized signatory is going to be the name of the signatory of the contract. Save and return. That'll take us back into the overview. And we're then going to look down to the next section, which is the technical responses. Now, the technical responses is going to require attachments largely so these will be documentation that you've produced as part of your project so things like project plan case studies delivery methodology delivery team overview resumes and business continuity so these will be more geared towards the actual delivery of the project and should link across to the statement of work so to attach we just click into attachment add the attachment and attach as so now you will need to check when ITTs are closing and you might want to check as soon as they are ready depending on their size and complexity because some of these documents may need preparing, others you will likely already have. If as you're going through the questions you do then have clarifications, we can also do that within the portal. So I'm just going to upload all of my documents there as so. And save and return. If in the process you've got a clarification question, that is going to be dealt with at the top here. So we've got messages. We're going to click in to create a message. Add your subject. If I can spell. add the body and send the message that will send it to uh, Bloom and to the buyer for review and they'll respond back which will also be accessible within 
the messages area. If you're logging in, you will also see any messages sent back within the new messages widget within the middle. And you can click directly into that and take yourself into the question and response there. So as you can see, I can go back into my ITT. This has been saved, the progress so far. And the final bit I'm going to do is the commercial response. Edit response and then put the information. So this is just to confirm um, the information around the management fee and, and other of the Bloom terms and conditions that you're, you're aware and happy with that. You're then going to input your pricing based off the work order, sorry, the, the schedule within the specification statement of work. If you've got expenses, you can also include them within here as well. These dates should also uh, relate to your delivery schedule. Um, and these will be used to build the SDP milestones that will be then used as part of the invoicing later down the line. Once you're happy, save and return and OK. Once everything has then been done, all the questions have been answered, we need to submit the response. To do so, you just click into submit, click OK. And then if you haven't completed, it's going to say that you're missing mandatory fields. So it won't let you send it if there is a mandatory field. Now, the mandatory fields are shown by a red asterisk. So we just want to zoom down and see which questions we've missed. We can see in there that there's a blank response. So we're going to go in, update that, and confirm that as yes, you can meet the requirements. Save and return. Back up to the top, submit the response, and you'll get an alert to say you've been successful. So that has now gone through to Bloom and to the buyers. You can come back out, and the status of that will have updated to remove it from your pendings. And if you go into my ITTs, you can see your response is submitted to the buyer. Once the buyer has reviewed and made the award, your status for the ATT will change to closed and awarded. At that point, you'll receive an email to say whether you've been successful or not with the tender. If you have been successful, we will then go on to generate the, the work order, uh, which we'll send through for you for signature. So you're going to receive an email that looks like this uh, from Jagger. You'll need to click into the documentation. And that's going to bring you up the work order that's going to relate to your project. Agree to use the electronic records. Continue. You're then going to review your work order. And then once happy with that, down the bottom, click to sign. Adopt and sign. And up at the top, finish. That's going to have signed the contract. When we come back into the provide to platform that will then update and we'll go on to create the SDP from there. See the next video in the series uh, to see how you're going to submit your SDP or as ever please get in touch on the phone via email at suppliers at bloom.services or visit the supplier resources on our website. Thank you very much.